he earned his artistic degree at the Art Institute of Pittsburgh and honed his skills amid Manhattan's competitive illustrative world. He since has made a career of international standing, crafting richly creative images for more than 60 children's books, some translated into six different languages. Yet John Mander's abiding artistic passion lies in the creation of black and white cartoons in online historical fiction formats, a vestige of his youthful years crafting comic books. He is talented, successful, and inspired by the place where he works, a studio in the Transportation Building in Oil City, Pennsylvania, where John Manders is a standard bearer for the city's artist relocation project. I came by and spoke to Joanne, and, and uh, we went Joanne out is the director, right? Joanne oh. Wheeler is the, is the director here. She pretty much uh, runs, runs the Transit Building here. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, and the thing that uh, just captivated me was uh, this very inexpensive rent and this is uh, uh, John D. Rockefeller's old building so he he uh, pulled out all the stops as far as the Victorian woodwork and uh, just every office is is a gorgeous space in, in which to work it's an honor to to, to work here and what year so, did you come here what year mm -hmm. well I guess it was about five years ago so five years later how would you assess that choice to come here is it has it been what you hoped it would be I, I almost came here kicking and screaming, I think, because when I, when I first realized that it was going to be a long haul back to Pittsburgh, if I ever want to go back for culture, you know, and, and restaurants and stuff like that, um, I was a little dismayed with my decision to come here. I, I thought maybe I, because when I first arrived, I asked uh, the neighbor across the road, um, where's, where are good places to eat around here? And one of his recommendations was the gas station. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> But it turns out, you know, if you go to one of these gas stations, it's like a full-service restaurant. <laughs> I wasn't aware of that. It was kind of okay. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, um, yes, you have to make a big transition. I was, I was dismayed at first, but the more I lived here, the more I uh, figured it out. There are a lot of advantages to being here that you don't find in the big city. Like? And, um, for one thing, I have a lot more privacy here, uh, especially at home. I can do whatever I want. I live on almost two acres. So um, people don't bug you if you want to build a campfire or something in your backyard. That was a no-no when I lived in Pittsburgh, or it certainly wouldn't be possible in New York City. Um, and um, um, I have a nice circle of good friends here, many of whom I've met through renting here in the transit building. I wouldn't know them otherwise. I tend to spread out. I'm like most artists. I, whatever I happen to be working on takes over a chunk of of the room and if you have multiple projects going on as I do yeah it takes over the whole room and it is difficult to live in that kind of situation so um, it's, it's nice to have a separate place where I can come and it's just for doing the art and and um, is yes, this place uh, inspiring to you in any way? Like you said earlier, it's John D. It was John D. Rockefeller's creation and the woodwork and the size of the rooms and the structure. Does it inspire you to work more creatively? Do you think? Oh yes, I'm much more comfortable um, in an environment where where it's, it's nice to look at. You know, um, it feels like a um, a, uh, a film noir kind of detective movie here with with the, the office spaces because they're from you know a hundred years ago and. And uh, so I, I, I like I like a, a mood when I come in here. I like uh, I like the ambiance. The uh, if there's one the, word you could history. use to describe this building and this this artist conclave, I'll call it for lack yeah. of a better term. What would you What would you What word would you use? One word. Um, creative, I guess. You know, people here are they come here to be creative. We have a nice gallery downstairs. I've, I've shown in the uh, graffiti gallery. It's run by uh, by the artists of the transit building and, and uh, artists who are not in the transit building. Um, and it, there are some, I would say, some some world class shows put on in there. World class exhibits. We invite artists from elsewhere to come here and, and uh, show, and we feature local artists a lot too. Then there's also the transit gallery downstairs, which sells art and crafts and um, and that's going really well too. Upstairs is a dance academy 
So around four o'clock, the kids start coming in after school and and you know running up and down the stairs, and it's just nice to have that kind of an environment where you feel like there's other stuff going on. You're not all alone here, uh, toiling away. <laughs> You said you work on multiple projects at one time. Of everything you're working on right now, can you tell us your favorite project and your hopes for it? Sure. Um, I, uh, I'm working on an online comic, and going back to my love of cartooning after all these years, and um, it's it's about young uh, Elizabeth Tudor, Henry VIII's daughter, who later becomes Queen Elizabeth, and. Um, so it's historical fiction. And when when will this be available for people to see? Well, I'm working on it now. There are three pages up already. It's at glorianacomic.com. Good. We'll post that so that people will be able to see it. Okay, thanks.